As the sun comes up, nature beckons. Everything we've learned, growing, building, towards this one moment. Oh, love it. Okay, now that was a good one, Toby. Hey, do you want to try one more just from the top? We can just add, uh, feel a little bit more upbeat, maybe just a bit quicker. Cool, absolutely. Anything you want to try? Do you want to try um, like the hint of uh, any different accents at all? A bit more, yeah, a bit more global. Okay, sure. Cool. All right, let's give that a shot. I'm a voiceover artist, uh, and I live in the middle of nowhere in the New Zealand jungle, and am heard on TV sets and computers around the world, but no one knows what I look like. <laughs> Formula One is not all about the track. A crucial race is taking place back at the factory. Four Corners American Gin, made from America. Come enjoy these bold new flavors for a limited time at Outback Steakhouse. Life is truly what happens between you and your destination. Voiceover is my absolute passion. I love everything to do with voiceover. I teach it, I breathe it, I work in it. I um, work with brands from all over the world and work for Facebook, work for Samsung, work for Google. And uh, I'll go from uh, sitting in a session in New York or LA or London with, you know, six different um, people in, in, in a studio listening to my voice. And then when the session's done, I'll walk outside and grab a handful of grass and feed my sheep. <laughs> and uh, I know that I'm miles from anywhere. On the land we have three sheep, we've got two beautiful kids, we've got a house bus and uh, another cabin and lots of space for people to stay. Um, and we've really kind of like, I don't know, built a life here that allows us to spend more time with our kids, um, which is what every parent wants. And also just to follow ideas that you otherwise wouldn't necessarily have time to follow, especially being an artist, is, is, is being able to explore these new ideas. Because sometimes those, those ideas grow up and have a life of their own, which becomes self-supporting. When I was four years old, I adapted my baby monitor to hang outside the bedroom window <laughs> so I could assault people on the footpath outside with my voice doing a radio show. Yeah, that was uh, Focus Moving Waves with Hocus Pocus. And uh, now we've got a report on Mr. Blobby. And since then, audio has always played a really big part in my life. Later on, when I was when I'd gotten further down the track in broadcasting and sound recording, it felt to us that we were just going through the motions. Not really, not really what we expected in terms of like life. You know, it's so easy to get caught up in the rat race of the city uh, and working so many hours, and you kind of think, for what? Like, why? Why are we doing all this time when we don't actually spend this time doing what we want to do? In Auckland, we really felt like we were missing missing out on getting our hands dirty. So it was a case of really trying to think how could we get out of this sort of city trap and get into something where you're kind of surprised every day and you feel like you're making a long-term difference. You're putting seeds in the ground and watching them grow. So the house bus was here when we bought the land and uh, we lived in it for about five years while I was getting the voiceover career up and running. But yeah, it was lovely like living in this small space and having a fairly low impact for a while and raising one of our kids in here, really. Like it is really a leap of faith you have to make, I think, when doing these endeavors. We kind of only had like, you know, six month savings stashed away um, to live on and thinking I'm gonna spend 24 hours a day just trying to get this thing off the ground. You have to realize that it won't always work, but if it does work, then it'll lead to a whole new chapter in your life. It's the most satisfying thing I've ever done in my life was build build a house. I was I was had it in the background that I want to have kids and I want to build my own house. And it was like you know, the actual dream. We live completely off grid here. We've got a solar on the roof which provides all our power, and we've got this lovely big wood fire which provides our cooking heat and heats the house and heats the water as well. So we've got an abundance of firewood around which keeps us going all winter. We wanted to do something quite different, not just build a house, just we didn't want that one off the shelf. Uh, we wanted to do something that was very eco-conscious. Anytime we had the decision between a product that was biodegradable and wasn't, we would go with the biodegradable option. 
So the house is built of hempcrete, which is a mix of hemp and lime. Uh, the walls are 350 mil thick, about a foot thick, and uh, they've got a huge insulative uh, property, which keeps the house super warm in winter. Are you done, Izzy? That was quick. Okay. <laughs> I mean, not only did you know we save on the labour costs, but I learnt so much about building a house during that period. Um, and uh, yeah, to, to actually get to do that uh, in this beautiful place is amazing. Like, I feel so thankful for that. Oof, a lot of holes. A lot of holes. Let's hope they pass the test, eh? I like to be memorable because of where I am and who I am, but in terms of actually scoring the work, I think it's, it's all about the person, it's all about sort of the, the vibes you get from the voice and, uh, and how it makes you feel. Human culture is made of stories, like our entire cultural build-up. Everything from the legal system through to how we, how we describe the natural environment, so much of this stuff is, is narrative-based. It is such an exciting thing because we are able to make these things appear in our minds, in our mind's eye, when we're told stories, and live vicariously through them. Um, and how they're told is really important as well. It's our job as voice artists to go into the studio and then play with our voice and have full control so the director can tell us what kind of picture they want to paint. So it's, it, it's, sometimes it's about big bold strokes, sometimes it's about really tiny little details. I think having 20 years experience in voiceover gives you a really good instant sense, an intuitive sense of what a script needs, of how it needs to be delivered, and how I can best bring the right accent, the right delivery, and really give it that emotional impact. And sometimes a surprising emotional impact is the best. Uh, when the words don't agree with the subtext, um, that's where you can get the most interesting stuff. Yeah, I think moving to the country has really exceeded my expectations in what I'm able to do and get fulfillment from that thing. It feels like you switch from like a monoculture to sort of more of a permaculture where you can grow a lot more things in your life that give you different kinds of energy. I found again that that inspiration, that kind of lightning bolt that you can't really pay for or generate yourself. It just happens um, when everything lines up and everything feels really good about what you do. It didn't behave like anything you had ever imagined. The wind tore at the trees. The rain fell for days, slant and hard, the back of the hand to everything. I watched the trees bow and their leaves fall and crawl back into the earth, as though that was that. This was one hurricane I lived through. The other one was of a different sort and lasted longer. Then I felt my own leaves giving up and falling, the back of the hand to everything. But listen now to what happened to the actual trees. Toward the end of that summer, they pushed new leaves from their stubbed limbs. It was the wrong season, yes, but they couldn't stop. They looked like telephone poles and didn't care. And after the leaves came blossoms, for some things, there are no wrong seasons, which is what I dream of for me.